Well, hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Archer Shack Shop Talk. If I'm not mistaken, this is podcast 135. We're back to our original format. And if you hadn't been here before, I'm Jeremy. I'm TJ. We're going to try this again where we pre record it. It's a busy season here at the shop. We're just trying to, um, I guess, we don't want people waiting forever on us to go live, is basically what it is. And uh, we just wanted to go old school again. So, yeah. Um, we'll try this for a while. This this one's not going to be particularly fancy because we ended up staying over <laughs> almost two, two hours, hours, and then I had plans to do a big green screen thing and have nice logo, but I'm not even going to do all that. We'll just <laughs> record this and try it again next week. If y'all could see, you can probably see from some of the peripheral camera peripheral. I can't say that word cameras, <laughs> but there's bows and boxes and stuff. Everywhere. everywhere i mean we about broke our neck just to kind of get set up like we <laughs> yeah. are so we'll, we'll oh, leave yeah. it kind of low-key this week but uh yeah we add had to add bow hangers above our head now because we ran out of room and we had uh honestly i think the year started off weird and slow in the mm-hmm. in the middle of the year but like this week's probably bow sale numbers wise probably the best week in the history of the shop because like tuesday like five bows sold on a tuesday which is really weird yeah. and then there were several one and tours the rest of the week and then we had a semi big day today and it's like man this is pretty cool so even though the year the busy season started late it's like it's really hit big time now so yeah normally in our like our busy season is we kind of see just a little gradual uptick before it absolutely busts out wild this year it just kind of it just went buck wild at one time it wasn't no rhyme or reason it just it went wild and we were kind of like when is this going to happen is it going to happen because you know when COVID hit we were kind of in uncharted territory and it went mm-hmm. really wild the whole year which we've never yep. seen before around here it's like you got your tournament crowd early year then you got a couple month break of not a ton going on then you got your hunting crowd then you got your christmas but like yeah. covid the two covid years was like busy year round yeah it was this year started out that way but then it turned out to go back to sort of 2018 2019 then it dipped below 2018 19 and i freaked out and thinking oh lord we've over ordered but now it's going wild so i don't know but anyway that's our story for now it's yeah. uh, august the sixth i think of 2022 so if you're watching this way later but we um have found out something that may be uh scary but basically uh devin had figured out how he could finance a bow through an app basically and i didn't know it but i mean i knew it but i didn't really pay attention to it on our website we sell bowstrings on every now and then it would say like they paid for it with shop pay so I did some digging, and what that means is you can break it into payments and all this. So I was like, well, I bet we could do sell bows that way. Mm-hmm. So sure enough, this week we found out um, it'll let you break it into like payments and do monthly stuff. And there, you know, within a certain couple month time period, there's no interest and all this. So we started slowly putting that out there. Yeah. And today basically was the first day we've really used it. And it, I think once word gets out, it's going to be a big deal because yeah. basically it worked for everybody. It just breaks it up into payments. As long as you don't go over, you know, a long time, it's not going to charge you interest and all this stuff. Yeah. So it might be a game changer for us. Um, I had tried several years ago to finance, work with a finance company for people, and I, I tried like five people, and it didn't, it didn't approve anybody. So I was like, all right, this is not worth it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't want to advertise we're financing and if nobody's getting approved. This deal looks like a lot of people, are everybody, everybody so far is getting approved. So yeah, if uh, going forward, not like right now, maybe going into the new bows released in October, like from Bear, I may start putting them on the website, which I hadn't done before, the ones we can ship. Mm-hmm. And then anybody would have that finance option. Yep. You know, if you lived in nebraska and we're in south carolina you could still go in there and say hey i want this bare bow with their strings and this site and this rest and all this stuff and be able to finance it and we custom set it up ship it to you that would be cool yeah but just for us locally it's sort of a big deal because you know there's a lot of people that come in i mean i know how it is you want 
you know, like you want the thousand dollar bow, but you really got four or five hundred dollars. So what are you going to do? But to be able to say, hey, you could have six months to pay this thing. It's a big deal. It is. So anyway, that's seems pretty cool. Seems yeah. like it helps all parties involved. So the only thing is, is like you said, we we can't ship like Prime or the Legend series of the Bears. So that that's the only thing we don't want people to get confused that if it is an option on the website, it's we can't sell those bows or ship yeah. those bows but other than all that we got a ton of bows to work on yeah we um had some interesting people come through i got some pretty good footage today not the greatest but better than last week we're recording this on a saturday of a few setups and sales and restrings and all that and uh it is crazy mm. how many people find us on youtube yeah. Is this going into year two or three of doing this? Uh, two, I think. Okay. Um, it is crazy. And especially like the local people, you know, that never, never knew we was here. And, and we, at, you know, like, we never knew y'all was here. Well, how'd you hear about us? We seen your videos on YouTube. Yeah. And it's just crazy. I never, I never really even it never crossed my mind that when we made these videos of any sort that any local people would see them or give a crap you know what i mean but it has it has really boosted our local people and we've got a lot of folks driving two three four hours yeah. here that say either they don't have a shop or don't care to deal with their shop and mm -hmm. they've seen our stuff so it's it is wild it is what the internet is and i you know as much as i'd like to stay on top of things i think tiktok is the current thing and i, I have made a few and that one has already got over ten thousand views and all that stuff but it is it's hard especially this time of the year to try to post everywhere but i'm yeah. gonna start doing my best to keep up better with it but the um the youtube is has blown my mind yeah it and you know i was just strictly thinking well put you when they will sell a few more strings or that sort of thing but we've been to shoots all over you know mm -hmm. tack and this and that and the other and people's like hey we know y'all we know y'all and then there's there's local people rolling in and people driving for hours and mm -hmm. it's it is crazy i would say i don't out any business you know if you're watching and you own a i don't whatever a painting business or a roofing company or whatever i, I think slowly dripping out youtube youtube videos yeah. would help tremendously because i didn't I really, we could we could roll back to first couple podcasts. Well, we're just gonna see if this works. Yeah, and I mean, we're just a bunch of dumbasses talking, you know. <laughs> and it's like hell. Then these people are rolling in. So, I mean, and we even said it on the very first one. You know, like we don't think anybody's gonna want to listen to us, a couple rednecks or whatnot, talk about bows. I mean, yeah. we just really didn't. And you know, thanks to y'all. I mean, here we are, what, 135 into this? Yep. I mean, it's crazy. But speaking of YouTube, I mean, I recently, you know, besides watching, you know, our videos and, uh, like, Merit Outdoor videos and stuff like that, Hunting Public, Seek One, I've got to where I watch a lot of YouTube shows on there now. So I guess uh, Stanley Cooper, Stan the Man, as y'all know mm -hmm. him on the live feed, Mm -hmm. he comes in and he says i don't watch tv he said i watch youtube he said that's pretty much all i watch and so i just wonder if that's a you know the year we started this thing was the year that i kind of realized that i was like i don't really watch tv but i will in the house watch youtube about like whatever and it seems like at least half of my stuff is like how to do something like how do you cook something like mm -hmm. that you know a recipe or uh how do you fix a dryer just broke or whatever so yeah. i think i think the how-to videos go a long way but then like in our world like anything i post matthews gets a lot of views obviously and then other ones are hit or miss there's sometimes not a rhyme or reason but it uh it's just it's crazy it you know? is. and i honestly i wish i had the resources if we could film even if it was just saturdays more of like a i don't want to call it a reality show because i don't want i don't want you to think anything's staged but like yeah 
if we could film what really happened, some of the crazy stuff and some of the this, that, and other that happens here, I think people would be hooked on watching it. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you know. <laughs> it's, I mean. We, it, you, you have a retard come in with a. Oh, we can't say that word. We'll, we'll get banned. Okay. I'll, I'll turn that, take that out or bleep it off. Um, <laughs> you have a guy come in with a crossbow from, this was an example from today, and I don't think this hopefully won't be seen by him but because i don't know who it is but yeah you know i, <clears throat> I bought a 50 dollars crossbow at the pawn shop and it didn't have a scope on it i didn't looked at cabela's and you know the cheapest crossbow scope they had was a couple hundred bucks y'all got anything under 30 dollars like man no I, and no offense because he probably didn't know any better but like you got a 50 dollars crossbow i'd be scared to touch the thing but uh you know and the some i bought six arrows yesterday and <clears throat> this morning i shot them all into trees and rocks and broke them and i need another pack y'all got any more durable <laughs> you know just crazy stuff like that it's yeah. like what in the world but i think we could be a blend of american chopper and the pawn stars show yeah if we could have like more time dedicated to filming some stuff and somehow figure out how to film some customer interaction but well, the only way we can do it is, is they would have to sign a waiver giving us permission yeah. to record them and everything else. And I mean, and I'm not trying to become a reality show. No, I'm just saying no. there's a lot of stuff in the archery shop that happens that archery people, which is y'all, would probably get a big kick out of. But also don't want to like make anybody mad, mad, or so it would be a fine line. But it would. It would there are some definite stories <laughs> I would love to tell someday. Oh man, I that, got a I got a list in my phone. I've I've got one uh one I think I could tell from last year. I think it was the first one I said I'm gonna start making a list was a guy came in and basically said I shot a, a doe at about ninety five yards with my crossbow. You know, it was like an old Barnett jackal. Yeah. And was was just floored that it didn't make it. Yeah, it didn't kill the deer. And we're looking like say what? <laughs> and this guy is dead serious. Yeah. And uh, just stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just stuff like that. And people that come in with bows that hadn't been touched in twenty and thirty years, and yeah. that sort of thing. But that—that's the crazy part. I mean, it's wild. It is. We're getting uh, a little over a month away from our hunting season opening. The lower part opens sooner than that, but yep. lower part of the state. But we're getting—we're about a month and a week away, and uh, we're getting geared up i've tj got a saddle yep hadn't even took it out of the box yet it came in this morning yeah, i gotta get a hunting bow set up and i gotta get shooting and all that i was talking to a guy today i'm gonna try to film he, i told him chuck hicks um he's a taxidermist literally just right down the road yep and i told him i said i wouldn't mind filming you a couple times you know kill a deer just to a get a hang of it and see what kind of gear i should bring because i've got all this camera stuff now and b if it's something we could make kind of simple we might could start including some of that on this channel mm -hmm. and uh so we'll we'll see what we can come up with there but he was in here we're talking about getting trail cameras up and he got his bow ready uh we restrung it for hunting season and all so i gotta get my stuff together but it's a uh it snuck up on us here again it's hot hot yeah. hot, hot hot um like 95 degrees this week i'm ready for some a little bit cooler weather yeah but man well we ain't too far out from football season starting too yep. so that always kind of brings in the hunting season up in the upper part of the state for me um yeah, the saddle sitting out there in the front seat of the truck, still in the box. They ain't ain't even opened it up to see. Um, even to look at it, but it may be a podcast or something later on down the road when I get used to it. Yep. Let's see here. Here's somebody texting me now about a bow. Because I am completely a greenhorn on saddle hunting. Um, there's, there's a bunch of people y'all have seen them on the on the live live feed and on the podcast. We talk about it and everything. But and I'm in all the saddle hunting groups on Facebook. And it's sometimes it's really 
it's overwhelming because everybody there's so many different ways you can do stuff one stick and self you know repelling out of the tree look that's all greek to me i just want the most basic simplest thing on how to do what and everybody tell me just get out and practice with it and that's that's my intentions um hopefully my sticks will be here one day next week and as far as the platform i think for this year i think i got a lock on at the house i'm gonna put up because i'm gonna be hunting private land i'm not running and gunning on you know public land if i was doing that i'd probably go ahead and get a platform but i'm probably just going to use that lock on i've already got some trees that i can preset my sticks and that lock on on and just try to get the hang of it this year and then look into maybe next year you know full bore lightening up the load and everything the um i'm curious to see you get that saddle figured out and then you know then i I hadn't really put a whole lot of thought into one, but I guess basically if you like it, it might be something I end up getting or playing with. Cause I mean, I, there's so many people using them. I'm very intrigued. It's just, I know there'll be a small learning curve to figure it out, but I'm, I'm kind of at the point I got my old API tree stand. It's still fine, but I, yep. I'm about to the point of, I need to either buy another climber or go to the saddle route. And I may just wait it out this year and use the old API, but I may, you know, if you like the saddle deal next year, jump on that too. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm probably, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, but I'm going to try to get, I'm just going to do it all at ground level first, just oh, to yeah. play with everything, put that lock on on the tree and just kind of see, play, adjust and see what works for me and that's what everybody tells me and then there's so many upgrades that, or mods you can do for it um i know stanley was telling me he loves the uh the ropeman one which is uh kind of acts like a prussic knot where you can adjust it mm -hmm. and he said sometimes a prussic knot on your tether can kind of get kind of tight and it gets difficult to kind of loosen or tighten if you want to loosen if you kind of want to you know sit down a little bit so i'm gonna play with what i got now before i start trying to deviate i'm just like i said i'm a green horn i'm hoping and this is something if you're a sort of a semi-regular listener i'm hoping to figure out and it may be after we calm down a little bit here in a month or two but um i'd really like to be able to pop on to like zoom calls or something and and have almost like a guest or at least for a little teeny part of the show but make it simple yeah but, but also make it we've tried it a few different ways before make it i don't want it to be all blurry and all this mess you know trying to bring somebody on the on the screen or whatever so i'm gonna figure that out or at least give it a shot with a few people <clears throat> and then yeah. we could you know if somebody said hey let's i wouldn't mind getting on there and hollering talking to you all about whatever we could do it yep but uh have you watched any of the fi of the the asa classic i have not i ain't either it keeps popping up i guess it's on youtube or whatever i haven't and, watched uh, it yet i have not I, f I have honestly this whole year hadn't watched a ton of it i feel like we geared up geared up and then did tack and kind of just but in our defense our there wasn't a ton of tournaments locally after that. Yeah. What about Elite dropping that new tournament bow at the ASA? I like the specs of it. Yep. I really thought that was good. I hadn't held one or seen one in person, but I like the specs of it. Mm -hmm. We're getting closer to the, um, I guess, Bear will be our first Bear PSC, dropping some stuff right around yep. October the 1st time frame. We did get in the hunting public Bo, what's it called? The um, the adapt. The adapt for about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it literally we were dealing with people, several people. UPS man sit it in the front there. The phone rang. Guy said, "If you got one," I said, "A bow just walked in. I don't know what it is. Hang on." It was one of those. He said, "I'm coming to get it." And uh, so I did snap a few pictures of it. But other than that, 
nothing so it looked good from what i get from what little bit i got to see of it i did shoot it when i set it up for him i shot it a couple times and it felt good i like the 32 versus the 30 for me Mm -hmm. on the like versus the species but um i already got another one coming so i guess if you're watching and (laughs) you're dying to have one and want to get that one we can holler at us because that the way they talked um it'll be here probably in about 10 days or a little more so anyway it did look like a good bow the grip's a little different um it's longer but it's it's basically the species sort of platform with just a few tweaks and they put a limb stop on it yeah how did the back wall feel on it good um it's hard it's it's the same basically the same cam so like i thought it was going to be feel the same but i don't know if it was just the grip that rubber grip the mm-hmm. that made me think something felt different or what but it's it's hard to say but it's a good looking bow it is and i'm sure they're probably gonna offer more kind of camo patterns i wouldn't be surprised to see them like slowly come out with like the hunting public site the rest yeah and finally have like a whole hunting public package mm-hmm. based off of what they want to do but i don't think it'll just be like a wow it'll just be a slow drip i wish that bow would have came out a little bit earlier yeah because with it coming out basically sort of around july you got limited time for us to get them and to get the word out and all that yeah so, and that at that time we still hadn't really hit our busy season it's like well we don't wanna, we don't want to order another dozen bows and we yeah. don't know you know we're sitting here with a couple dozen already wonder if we're gonna sell them yeah but now it's hit and it's like well we probably should at least got a few more yeah but it's okay and then plus it's time for the rumor mill to start running around about what who's doing what for i've talked to a couple reps they all said as of this week none of them have had their yearly meetings yet so they don't know what's going on and usually in about a month we might hear start hearing some Rumors. little tidbits of yeah. stuff but not quite yet the um I'm trying to think the adapt bow i guess was the most recent sort of drop for us big bow drop. we got as of the recording of this we still got plenty of spot hog stuff because <clears throat> we had a shipment come in uh we're looking decent on arrows we're looking real good on broadheads so any of that stuff you need we got it i'm gonna try the uh, Montec M3s this year and on, as soon as we can I'm going to go out there and we're going to test the M, that one and the Dead Meat V2 doing our little destruction test mm-hmm. um, so stay tuned for that one Yep, I think I'm going to run the Mega Meat this year I'm hearing too many good stories not to try last year a lot of people talked about the Mega Meat mm-hmm. and uh had good luck but <clears throat> this year i think the i don't know the dead meat v2 they seem to be kind of pushing i guess it's just their newest yeah and newest i can't deal. remember what the difference is between the v2 and the re- and the original dead meat i haven't they our rep and people at g5 told us but i just can't remember um but other than that i hadn't seen like bear redid the razor head and uh it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool setup. it might be worth us doing a video or something i wish it's is neat the way they got it set up so for people that are wanting to do the you know do a heavy air setup and a a heavy broad head it's got three different ferrules that you can use one the actual broad head itself is 150 grain that you can glue on the arrow but it's, I think it's geared more towards a wooden air, or could you glue it straight on the carbon? You can't glue it on the carbon. You could the wood. Yeah. Uh, tapered, like a tapered mm-hmm. wood, yeah. And then, so if you're running carbon, uh, the head's 150, but it's got a ferrule that will make it 175. And if you want, if you was running a 200 grain, they got a ferrule for a 200 grain, and it's pretty much unscrewing it screwing that other ferrule in putting a broad head on it and bam 200 grain head and then they've got a third ferrule for 250 grains so it's what four broad heads in one basically yeah well, and three can, in one for a compound you could it's to me it's like 
y'all are probably familiar with the ranch ferry sells that little tuning kit with the field tips this is sort of like the same thing but with a big two blade stout broadhead so you could finagle with you the grains and how it flies and all this stuff tuning on it without we're just buying this one kit you know yeah. what i mean so i mean it's and it's it, uh it comes with three field tips that you just screw on that ferrule too so it's a nifty idea it it trophy ridge surprised me really twice at the show because it was that I remember and it was just like oh yeah we just came out with this and we were like good god that's badass yeah and then the digital site yep. it, it was the same way we just had, we seen that and was like what, what is in this the world and we we're like okay and those things have been doing great i'm gonna hunt with one yep me too um we've sold i was worried it'd be more of a pushing it type of thing but a lot of people have bought them mm-hmm. more than i thought so yeah. i think we still got at least five or six of them but we got, actually, I got them on the website. If you, I hadn't had anybody buy one off the website, but if you want one, I can uh, put the link down there or whatever. Just shoot, call us or shoot us a message or whatever you need to do. But um, yeah. they, I'm going to put a lens in mine and shoot it that way like I did at TAC. I've never hunted with a lens. I'm going to give it a shot. But um, Trophy Ridge, I feel like they stepped it up a little bit. Yeah. And we have, and like you know, we's talking about new stuff. We have no idea what everybody's coming out with. I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see what they're going to do because I think some people kind of topped out last year. I'm not going to say topped out, but you know, had a good release. And I just kind of wonder, okay, how they're going to follow up this year? Mm-hmm. To, I know, it's hard to say because it I, is. I'm always like, what else can they do? And then finally they'll do something. And yep. It's like, well, okay, but it just blows my mind i wouldn't want to be a product designer or anything because my i'm i don't know oh, man. 20 years ago i was like what else can they do <laughs> yeah well the recorder's blinking that we're about to die so i guess we'll chop this one off here this is sort of the format we're going to go into mm-hmm. we'll, we'll probably still do a few questions if y'all got them to send them in on the thing we'll try to get some more people on here like I say, this was more of a thrown together. We stayed two hours already late <laughs> yeah. and trying to get our stuff together. So thank y'all for listening. Yeah, thank Let you. Let us know if this format hopefully will kind of work. And uh, and you are going to try to dump it back out on Spotify gonna, and everything? I'm going to try to put it on all the different podcast platforms again. So we'll see. Yep. Thank y'all for listening. Uh, be safe out there and get them bows out and do some practicing. See y'all next time. See ya.